Hey designers, Barbara Bambly here and in this video we're going to talk about how to improve your own style by copying someone else. So I'm going to show you a guy that I really looked up to when I was a design student in uh, college. He has a really cool style. He uses a few lines, big pen of course, and he adds like one or two markers on there. And it makes a really dirty style of sketching and it's fast and it looks planted. He sketches cars most, mostly. And I'm going to show you the website, then we're going to take one of his sketches and we're going to try to copy that. So if you do that, let's say a thousand times, and then you look at your first sketch compared to your thousand death sketch, then you're going to see a huge improvement there. So that's what I want to show you how to do. So if you really want to improve your design sketching, this is one way to go. So let's check it out. So check this out. So this is the designer that I was talking about. His name is Tommy Forskri and he's from Sweden. He studied in Umeå Design which is up in uh, northern Sweden. It's a big design school for both product design and um, uh, automotive transportation design and stuff like that. So if we, you can check out his site yourself by going to toyfun.com and get inspired by clicking on the sketch wall up here. So check this out. This is the style that I was talking about that I love. It's really simple, guys. It's not complicated at all, but at the same time, he makes it look like it's dynamic and, I don't know, the proportions are just there. What I was talking about in the intro is to take one, any of these sketches that you see here, that you like, I mean, you don't have to like the same designer as I do, whoever it is, if it's like architecture, you find an awesome architecture, or uh, Illustrator, like vector files, if you're into that, take those, uh, find those designers, find their work online, and then you just take one of their sketches and try to be, uh, <laughs> try to copy it exactly as you see it. There is no shame in that, and everybody does it when they're learning new things, and it's one of the best ways and fastest ways to really get going with your sketching and Try to figure out what you're doing wrong by just simply making your sketch and put it right up to next to the original one and see where you're making mistakes and then you just make a new one. So uh, let's see which one we want to pick here. There's so many awesome sketches here. I'm gonna make, uh, I love this one right here to the left. It's such a cool sketch and this one too. You see the three quarter rear view is one of my favorite views. And he makes it look so easy. So I'm gonna just pick, uh, let's see if we can get one of these. Let's pick this one. It's just a big pen. So I'm gonna copy image, jump into Photoshop. And I'm gonna create a new, <coughs> new document up here. And I'm going to open up a new document, so just file new, whatever is fine. And then just command V and bam, we, we have our sketches here. So I want to focus on this one right here, so I'm going to crop that one out. So all right, we have our sketch. Now all we have to do is try to copy this sketch. So let's bring out the pens, markers and all of that pen and paper. I'm using regular printing paper this time as well since I'm uh, probably not gonna use any markers or I probably will <laughs> in the end anyway but the uh, printing paper works fine for now all right so let's get started we have our sketch and we have our pen and paper big pen as usual uh, so first of all let's try and figure out what kind of uh, basic lines we have in this sketch here I can see that we have a baseline and we have two wheels of course and the distance between these two are qu quite narrow something something like that let's put out the spokes just because it looks cool and we have the sh first the bodywork going something like this up to the greenhouse and we can see that the A pillar 
compared to the wheel starts around here somewhere where, where the rear wheel ends in a 45 degree angle and it slopes out pretty fast we have the spoiler or whatever you want to call it and we have some graphic elements in here uh, let's see how this goes and same thing on this side and we also want to put it out the wheel on the other side because it's gonna make the sketch look it's gonna make the car look planted uh, we have almost like in uh, Chris Bangle BMW rear end here uh, I mean if we want to we can start to design our own car from here we have the proportions down. The graphics, we can start to play around with that ourselves. If we don't want to like copy straight out. And we have the exhaust, the diffuser down here. Looks like a panel. are up here I don't know if we want them down up here or maybe down here. I'm gonna put them down here just to <laughs> make some sort of um, different design so what I'm doing right now I'm, I'm looking almost every single line before I put it down I'm looking at the sketch I'm trying to figure out where these lines are in relation to other features that are already put out so uh, for example uh, we have the uh, this where this uh, line starts to go down I can see that it goes down right underneath where this edge is up here so I want to keep that on the same spot right here and this obviously is going to be the same thing here I want to keep the keep that uh, geometry there there's symmetry and then we can start we can if we want to add some section lines like this and from here we can start to design our own car we basically have everything we need what I wanted to get out from this sketch was the proportions because I love the proportions of this car and from here we go on and create our line weight and our other features that we need on the design. So it's not really that complicated, but as with everything, it's gonna take time to get used to stuff like this and it's gonna take time to figure all of this out. I mean, line quality and the speed of your pen, all of that, it's, are, are things that just you have just you just gotta have patience with it and practice a lot because those are muscles that you're using and if you haven't sketched like this before you don't have those muscles in your hand and you need to they need to basically be warmed up over a long period of time and the only way to do that is to just keep practicing And I told you I was not gonna use markers on this, but it looks so marker friendly that I almost have to add some markers on here. So I am going to do that. I uh, just gotta figure out the graphics of the rear lights here, how I want them want them to look like I'm 
maybe around, like in the corner here. It's gonna look weird. Well, that looks okay. Something like... Sure, why not? Let's keep it like that. And you can always explore different features and different graphics by putting out some really... Uh, not thin lines, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, yeah, I guess thin lines, because you can always adjust later on. See, right now I'm trying to figure out how this will look on the other side here, so I'm not really putting any pressure on the pen. I just want to explore. And obviously this needs to go down a bit more and now I can start to add pressure to this and we have our rear lights and I think we're ready for markers now So let's see, the wheels are massive, <laughs> that's fine. Alright, so let's add some markers to this. Let's see what we have. Probably just gonna use cool gray for this one. Uh, let's use one single marker, I'm gonna use this one. BG3, it's blue gray 3, and I'm gonna use the thick end of it. And just go over, as we talked about in the last video, figure out where the light source is coming from, and then basically just have fun with it. And I know a lot of people ask about the bleed, that the marker is going to bleed, and it will bleed, but the faster you go over it with the, with the marker, the less the lines are going to bleed and even if it doesn't if it does bleed a little bit it's fine for me I think it looks it just adds to the sketchiness of the of the design and it gives that you know uh, fast look or dirty look that I like so you just by using one marker, you can still get different shades. So you see this area right here is darker than the middle area here, but it's still the same marker. And that's all about layering, marker layering, and the speed of the marker, the strokes. Like that, I'm pretty happy with this. I mean, I can stop right now if I wanted to. Or we can uh, <laughs> we can continue if we want to. Uh, it's totally up to us. But uh, I think I like this. And that's the style I was looking for. It could be a bit more planted or less height on it. I could lower it down a bit and make it wider. Uh, but for this, the purpose of this video is to copy your idol when it comes to designers and artists and stuff like people like that and just try to do the same thing as they do try, try to figure out how they did spe certain things and always remember to uh, use features in the sketch as reference to where you put your lines as as we talked about before so for example i'm i'm trying to look at the distance between the headlight here and the wheel arch for example I'm looking at the distance between the axles on the sketch. I'm looking at, uh, uh, for example, where this line wants, if I want to continue this line of the greenhouse up to the rear window. And small stuff like that, it makes a big difference and it, it's really helpful. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know who you are going to copy in this exercise. And if you have a link to your sketches, post them below in the comments. I would love to check them out. It's always fun. I hope to see you next time. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy these videos. It means a lot. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.